All right, everybody, uh, welcome to another episode of The Matt Report, uh, brought to you by Cobus Insurance Center. I'm uh, Sean Bennett from the Larry Chronicle Telegram. Joining me this week, Brad Borneville, writes for high school wrestling for The Chronicle, for the Medina Gazette, Akron Beacon Journal, pretty much uh, every major publication along Northeast Ohio. Uh, he's sitting in for Tim Alcorn, who uh, is braving the elements in uh, Arizona right now for uh, Indian Spring Training. Never been to Arizona, but uh, you've been out there. Uh, how, how tough is it with flip-flops and t-shirts every day? It's not tough at all. <laughs> I mean, I love Arizona so much, I named my dog Sedona, so I mean... It's one of the best places on earth. He's, I'm sure he's really rough in it. Yes, yeah. So, all right, well, let's get into it. Our first segment every week is the uh, top three performances. And let's start uh, with Mike Casella of Wellington. Uh, Mike uh, went 3-0 uh, and last week with three pins. Pinned his way through to the 220-pound uh, uh, championship at the Division III uh, sectional uh, independence. He was the number four seed. Uh, pretty impressive feat. Uh, you know, beat uh, number one seed Justin Bell, Columbia in the semis. Beat the number two seed uh, Penix of Magador in the final. Um, kind of a number four seed winning through, pinning that dominantly at a heavier weight, where usually it's like a two to one matches, uh, you know, at 220 and heavyweight and stuff like that. Kind of an impressive performance. Well, you know, you're going to get the number one seed in the in the quarter in the semifinals. So I mean, that right there says a lot. But you know, I, I was talking with a couple of the coaches that I know. Getting that number one seed this week is gigantic. So winning that sectional, everybody thinks it's not that big of a deal. To me, it's a huge deal because you set yourself up for not only this week, but next week because you're not going to see that that sectional champ until that semifinal match this week at district. You know, by then, you only have to win one match to get to state. So, you know, what happened last week is gigantic. And Casella, you know, he won the Patriot Athletic Conference, 220 pound there, beating Bell again in the finals of that one. So he's kind of what they call peaking at the right time of the season with that. 100%. And you, you, when, you, when you look at stuff like that, seeds kind of, the way they do seeding kind of bugs me because it's such a regimented stuff. And a lot of it is based on what happened last year. Well, that last year is last year. To me, you know, if, if you're rolling through and he's already beat the kid, why is he not seated higher this year? Right. Our second guy up is Lewis Aguilar, a guy that you've covered uh, multiple times this year at the Ironman at uh, Brexville uh, with Illyria. Uh, went 3-0 and with a pin to win the 195-pound title as the number three seed. Another uh, kind of underdog story here, back-to-back uh, -to, -back to start. He won 3-1 to in overtime against Justin Jacob, a state-ranked guy from Olmstead Falls in the semifinals. Then beat Avon's Jordan Greer 7-6 to six in the final, who's ranked number five in the state. And I know you were pretty impressed with Jordan Greer, who won that Brexville title. And kind of a, a big win for uh, Lewis Aguilar against a high-level guy. And, you know, he came in a very strong wrestler. This year, I think he has just taken a gigantic leap. I mean, give it, give it up for Eric Burnett. He does a fantastic job of coaching these kids. But the, the step this kid took from last year to this year is just amazing to me. Yeah, so, I mean, beating Jordan Greer, he kind of said it was one of the big wins of his uh, title. He gets kind of overlooked because there's some big names on their Luria roster, so it's nice to see he's kind of stepping up again at the right time. He's a senior year. He goes uh, makes a big statement in the first step of the postseason. Um, kind of interesting. I mean, he, he's basically said, I can beat a number five, uh, the number five ranked guy in the state, so it wouldn't be a surprise to see uh, Louis Aguilar on the uh, podium down at Columbus. I 100% agree with you, and he's at a weight, too, that's that's one of those ones. Is, it's kind of that hybrid weight where you know you you have that kid that's that's going to muscle you, and then you have that kid that's going to finesse you. So to see him do what he's doing at this weight, where he's getting both styles, it, it, it's pretty impressive. Our third uh, top performer is Jake Evans of Illyria, another Illyria guy. Um, probably the most dominating performance of uh, step one of the, uh, the postseason in the sectionals. Went 3-0 with three pins to win the 170-pound title. He was the number one seed, so not unexpected. But he beat pin Shane Swindig of North Ridgeville in 40 seconds in the quarterfinals. Pinned Aaron Andrzejewski in 37 seconds in the semis, and Dalton Diaz of North Olmsted in a minute 17 in the final. So he's in and off that mat in under two periods total in three matches. And you know, you, you think about that. We're this late in the season. There, nobody's 100. percent Everybody's dinged up a little bit. So to get it in and off that mat, and then to basically, you know, he's got six days where he. What did he? How long did he wrestle here? He wrestled about what? Two minutes. Yeah. So to wrestle two minutes last Saturday and then have six days off before you have to wrestle again, I mean, that only can help as far as, you know, getting the R&R before what's going to be an impossible men or district. Yeah. 
Um, all right, so that's our top three performers. Again, they're Mike Cassell of Wellington, Louis Aguilar of Illyria, and Jake Evans of Illyria. Uh, we're on to the next segment, which is uh, My Favorite Move. And this is brought to you by Century 21, Deanna Family Realty. Um, this week, uh, the My Favorite Move segment went out to Brookside. Uh, got with Matt Thompson. Uh, he is doing kind of a variation of what he, uh, vari- what he calls a variation on the lateral drop. Um, you know, it's, uh, he's a district qualifier, obviously, and that's one of the reasons we uh, talked to him. But uh, we'll kind of just l- run the video uh, uh, and let you guys kind of see his variation of the lateral drop. So My Favorite Move, brought to you by Century 21, Deanna Family Realty. Hi, my name is Matt Thompson. I'm a senior from uh, Brookside, and uh, this is my variation of a lat. So now I just do the slower. All right. So. Basically with this, I like to get an inside tie on the back of the head and kind of just snap him down. Kind of blocks his head from him coming up. And then you kind of just lock it in. And then what you want to do, you want to bring his far leg, this one, closer to you because I got the long leg, so I can't just reach, so I got to bring it a little closer. He steps in, block it, he goes down. Um, I guess there's... Another way I usually hit it, just the same thing, set up as a lat, under, over, on this side, an underhook, and then the other side and over. Just the same thing, pull them into you, turn it, and kind of go down. It's one of the two ways I like to hit it. So as you saw, um, kind of a not you know not a true lateral drop, which is more of like a, a throw, a Greco-Roman type move. Um, you know, it's a mo- almost like a, he uses that inside trip off the setup off a lateral drop, but the end result is pretty much the same. What I like about it is you see the head control. I mean, he, he brings him into him, so he's got him and can pretty much do whatever he wants. And like he was explaining to you, you know, it's you don't want to reach out for that that outside foot. So you know, in having the head control and being able to move him where he wanted, he actually brought him into the move. And like you said, it's it, it's more an inside trip, which is a fantastic move. And not only that, the, the way he does it, it completely completely sets up for the pin. I mean, if, if you're not going to get the pin, you probably should at least get some back points out of it. So it's a great move. Yeah, and I like the fact that he showed two variations with it from one side and from the other side. So... Uh, great uh, performance by Matt Thompson. We wish him all the best this week at the uh, at the Division II uh, uh, district out at Norwalk. Um, uh, and again, that was brought to you by Century 21 Deanna Family Realty. Kind of nice this weekend. I was at the uh, the Westlake sectional and got to see uh, both our sponsors out there: Mike Deanna of uh, of Century 21 Deanna Family Realty, Bob Kovas of Kovas Insurance Center. Both uh, were in there taking in the wrestling. That's the great thing about it. These guys aren't just uh, you know. Uh, you know, putting up uh, advertising for the sport. They're there watching the sport. They love the sport, and that's why they kind of do it. So really appreciate that uh, from our sponsors. Um, our next uh, uh, segment is uh, Spotlight on Coaching. Uh, this week we got uh, Scott Peepers of uh, Avon Lake, um, and we do. Uh, and what we did was we gave the uh, coaches, uh, we did that uh, three-hour live show before the season, and we gave all the uh, coaches questionnaires to fill out. So uh, throughout each uh, mat report, we kind of, uh, kind of take one of the questionnaires and kind of let people know a little bit more about some of the coaches in Lorain County. Uh, so Scott Peepers of Avon Lake, and we kind of asked him, uh, how did you get into coaching? He started helping at Avon Lake in 1983. He's an assistant there. Um, then he started coaching full-time in Washington State after having served in the U.S. Army. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, his top coaching accomplishment, he was named the Washington State Middle School Coach of the Year in 1994. That's, that's a first. I don't think I've uh, seen anybody uh, get that kind of uh, accomplishment. Uh, that's pretty cool. His best coaching memory uh, was when they had to paint the school name on a board to put it up on the top 10 board at the state meet. They had to actually create it for him. So that's kind of cool to make a little awesome. uh, you know, history there for him. I know that's one of your favorite terms. So, <laughs> uh, Best co- uh, uh, coaches influenced him. Howard Ferguson, obviously a legendary coach out there at uh, you know, St. Ed's. And Irv Stein, Larry McGuire. Favorite move to teach uh, young wrestlers uh, movement and setups for takedowns. Toughest part of the job for him is time away from family, which, you know, that's, that's a lot. That's tough for pretty much, yeah, it's tough for every job, but tough for me as well. 
Favorite college programs, Cleveland State and Ohio State, which um, I don't know if you've watched these videos, but almost every coach has been Ohio State. So he, he mixed it up with Cleveland State and Ohio State. Favorite high school tournament, the Walsh Jesuit Ironman, which you cover every year. Nothing like it. It's the best. Uh, in his free time, he enjoys spending time in the outdoors, including working in his yard and his garden. And we kind of said, oh, let's name some fun fact about you that nobody knows. And he just simply put down, I'm pretty boring. So I thought that was kind of a fun, you know, hilarious thing from Scott Peeper. So obviously, uh, thanks for Scott filling that out. And that's our Spotlight on Coaching segment. All right, let's move into the final uh, segment of the uh, video. And that's our weekly trivia. And um, yeah, I've been kind of keeping themes on our trivia uh, week to week. So we're going district tournament on this one. Um, so our, our tri- uh, first of all, let's start with our answer. Last week, we kind of talked about uh, the sectional tournaments. And my question was, who were the four wrestlers who won Division II uh, sectional championships last season? And it was kind of tricky because of the fact that um, there's two sectionals in um, Division II. We have our, all our Division I teams in Lorain County go to one site. Our Division Three teams go to another site. And Division Two gets split up in the Northwest. Uh, Vermilion goes to uh, Sandusky uh, for a two-day tournament. They're still, they still do the two-day sectionals there. And then everybody else went to Bay, or actually I think it was Brookside. I don't know. I can't remember last year uh, for the other one. So... Uh, the four wrestlers who won Division II sectional championships last season were Firelands Peyton Bergdorf and Sean Lipscomb, Keystone's David McCullough, and Vermilion's Tyler Bath. And again, that's the kind of the tricky part is that the, uh, Tyler won his at one sectional and the other three won it in our sectional. You've obviously seen um, a lot of these guys at state. Um, obviously, I think uh, uh, Peyton and, and Sean were down there last year. You saw you did a good story on him his freshman year um, and David McCullough as well. The, good guys. You, what do you think about some of those uh past uh, sectional champs. Those are great names, and you know what? You look at those names, and I always talk about this, especially Lipscomb. I think McCullough, too. They went to Fargo. So wrestling doesn't just stop in March. It, it, it really continues on. And if you do the summer wrestling and you make sure that you, you go to everything and, and really make it your passion, you see what happens. These kids all have sectional championships. Or district championships as well. Some of them placed at state, and a lot of it is because of that that extra work that they put in in the summertime. Absolutely. All right, let's move on to this week's trivia, and it's again uh, kind of a themed uh, for the district tournaments. Uh, so we'll start with uh, last week's uh, district qualifiers. Lorain County had 32 district qualifiers in Division One, 18 in Division Two, and 15 in Division Three. So a pretty good uh, uh, run for the uh, the Lorain County athletes. Elyria led all county teams, surprise, surprise, with 11 district qualifiers. Uh, Avon was next with nine, and Keystone was third with seven. So uh, good, good. Uh, all those uh, teams got uh, more than, or at least half their lineup into the, uh, into the second round. All right, this weekend's district tournaments include the Division I tournament at Mentor, the Division II tournament at Norwalk, and the Division III tournament at Garfield Heights. I'll be at the Division One at Mentor. You're going to be out at uh, North Canton Hoover, correct? At, at North Canton Hoover with uh, uh, Brexel and Wadsworth, yeah. Yeah, some nationally ranked teams there. I've got two nationally ranked in St. Edward and Elyria, which pretty much were the same two at the Westlake sectional. So it's kind of adding on a few teams. But if you got to see, if you came out to the Westlake uh, sectional, as you can imagine, there was really some, some high-level matches there. It was pretty much Eds and Elyria was, I think, in like seven of the 14 weight classes. Probably going to see a lot of the same this time as well. So uh, if you enjoyed what you saw last week, come out to uh, Mentor as well. And uh, it, 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 same thing with uh, Wadsworth, Brexville. There's some great, going to be great matches out at, uh, at Hoover, which I think Brexville is joining. So there could be some good uh, Brexville versus uh, Wadsworth uh, matchups. Yeah, by the end of it, by the semifinals, finals, it, it, it could turn into, like you said, like seven of the 14, it could turn to a, into a Brexville Wadsworth duel. Duel me, yeah. <laughs> All right, so the uh, question for uh, next week, and uh, this is going to be uh, obviously, again, a uh, district-themed question. Who are the five wrestlers from Lorain County who won district championships last season? That's our question. And our hint is four of the uh, district champs came out of Division I. So... Write it down in the notes, you know, under the uh, the posts. Uh, please feel free to, uh, you know, retweet or share, or however, whatever format you see this as well. And uh, that's going to do it for the penultimate episode of the Matt Report. Uh, next week, uh, Tim Alcorn will be back. Uh, probably a very tanned Tim Alcorn <laughs> will be back for the uh, uh, the season finale of the Matt Report. I want to thank, obviously, Brad for uh, joining and stepping in uh, for this week's uh, episode. Thanks, Steve Mannheim behind the camera. I'm Sean Bennett from the Larry Chronicle Telegram, and we'll see you next week for the season finale of the Matt Report.